Hi everyone, welcome back to the Machine Learning for Raspberry Pi series. My name is Kang from the TensorFlow team, and today I'll show you how to train a custom object diction model and deploy it on a Raspberry Pi. In the first video in this series, I show you how easy it is to run object diction on Raspberry Pi using a pre-trained TensorFlow-like model. Pre-trained models were usually trained on general datasets so that they can recognize general objects quite well, such as they can recognize a mouse or a keyboard. However, in many cases, you may need a model that can recognize specific objects, such as the Android figurines. That's why you need to train and deploy a custom model. These are three steps that you need to do. First, collect your training images and label them. Second, train a custom model using TensorFlow-Lite Model Maker. This is a Python library that allows you to train machine learning model in just a few lines of code, and there's no machine learning expertise required. Then finally, deploy the custom model to your Raspberry Pi. Actually, what you need to do is just to replace the pre-trained model that we used in the first video with a custom model that you're going to train now. The first step, collecting and labeling your training images, is probably the most time-consuming step, but also the most important one of the whole process. You need to collect the training images that contain the objects you want to detect. In each image, you will need to draw a bounding box around each object and label it. In this image, for example, I label two objects, an Android and an Android Pig. There are many tools that you can use for data labeling. Label IMZ is a popular open source app for this purpose. And let me show you how you can create a Android figurine object detection dataset by using Label IMZ. I started with thinking about 70 images of the two Android figurines that I have. In general, the more images that you collect, the better models that you can train. However, because we use a technique called transfer learning to train the model, you can start small with a few dozen images for each type of object that you want to detect. If you want to learn more about our transfer learning, check out the link in the video description. Then I start label IMG. Select the photo with the images. Then I go through each of the image and annotate the objects that I want to detect. So for example, in this image, uh, I will create a bounding box for the Android. And the Android pick. Then I'll go one by one through the images that I have taken and annotate the Android figurines in those images. You can download the Android figurine dataset that I have already annotated and use it so that you don't have to do the data labeling by yourself. My dataset is a zip file with two folders inside. The train folder contains about 60 images that we'll use to train the model. The validate folder contains about 10 images taken on different scene, and we will use those validation images to test if our object detection model can generalize well on new images that it has never seen before. Now let's start step two, train a custom model using this dataset. We'll use Model Maker, which is a Python library that makes it very easy to train models for common machine learning tasks. Instead of having to write a lot of code to train a object detection model, you can do it in just four lines of code by using TensorFlow-Lite Model Maker. Now on your Raspberry Pi, please go to Google Colab. This is an online tool from Google that gives you free access to computing resources to train machine learning models. You can find the link to this Colab notebook in the video description. Colab requires you to sign in to run the notebooks. If you have any issues with Google sign-in, make sure to turn off Chromium sign-in and try again. Go to settings, then type sign. 
and make sure to disable allow Chrome sign. After sign, you should see your profile picture show up here. And next, let's make sure to enable GPU because it will significantly speed up your model training. Go to runtime, change runtime type, and make sure that GPU is enabled. Click connect to start an instance. Now you start with installing Model Maker. And then import the necessary packages. Next, let's download the dataset. This is the Android figurine dataset that I have showed to you earlier. Here, I download a zip file from Google Cloud Storage and extract it to the Colab computer. You can also upload your training images from your local computer or Google Drive to Colab. Now we can start training our Android figurine detection model. We load the training dataset and the validation dataset from each folder. Then we choose a model architecture. Model Maker supports FGNet Lite, which is a family of state of the art object detection models optimized for edge devices. I'll talk more about different object detection model architectures in the next video. And now let's use FGNet Lite 0 which is the smallest one in the model family. Okay, now we can start the model training. It will take a few minutes to complete. Okay, now the training has completed. You can see that here I set epochs equal 20s which means that we'll go through the training data set 20 times. You can look at the validation loss during training and stop when you see validation loss, stop decreasing to avoid overfitting. Then we use the validation data set to see how well the model performs with images that it has never seen before. In this case, it shows an average precision of about 78% across the classes, which is quite good for an object detection model that runs on edge devices. If you are new to machine learning or want to learn more about what average precision means, check out the link in the video description. Model Maker uses TensorFlow under the hood to train the model for you. So the next step would be to export the model to the TensorFlow Lite format so that we can deploy it to the Raspberry Pi. And finally, you can test the TensorFlow Lite model accuracy using the same test data set. The TensorFlow Lite model average precision is about 77%, which is slightly lower than the original TensorFlow model. There are several reasons for this drop. One of them is that we use quantization to shrink the model size by four times and improve inference speed as a trade-off of reduced accuracy. If you want to retain the accuracy at the expense of a larger and slower model, you can also choose to turn off quantization when exporting the model. Okay, now you already have the custom model. Let's download it to your Raspberry Pi. Go to the Files tab on the left sidebar of Cola and right-click on the android.tfline model, then select Download. The next step is to run the model using the same object detection sample app that you used in the first video. You can also find the link to download the source code again in the video description. Let's reactivate the tfly virtual environment that we created in the first video. Run source tfly int activate. Okay, now go to the uh, examples, light examples, object detection, and Raspberry Pi folder. This is the folder containing the object detection Raspberry Pi sample app. And we will copy the android.tfly model that we downloaded uh, from Colab here. Okay, now let's rerun the object detection app with the default model. Run Python detect.py. 
So the default model is an object detection model trained on a general data set that was downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. So that's why it can detect there's a clock in the image, which is a general object, but it made incorrect detections about the Android figurines. Now let's run the detection script again, this time specifying that we want to use the android.tfly model that we just downloaded. Python detect.py and set the model parameter to be android.tfly. Now you can see that the model can detect the Android figurines that it was trained on. Because we retrained the model to recognize the Android figurines, the model has forgotten everything about the classes that it was trained on before. So it no longer can recognize the general classes like the clock in the image. Now it can only recognize the Android figurines. So that's all you need to train a custom object detection model and deploy it on your Raspberry Pi. In this video, we use the Action Dead Light 1 model architecture, but there are other model architectures that you can choose from. Whether if you want a model that is more accurate or a model that runs faster. We'll talk more about different object detection model architectures in the next video, and I will also give you some advices on which model architecture that you should choose for your use case. If you are new to training machine learning models, it's also important to familiarize yourself with the concepts in Responsible AI. You can learn more about those concepts in the link in the video description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.